Yeah, because I ordered the wrong profile steel, I've been waiting quite a long time to get the materials to build up the engine bay and cockpit. So yeah, I've just taken off the last beam. A little bit sad to see my garden go, but the fact that there's grass growing there is probably not good. <laughs> I've had a poke around though, and it all seems pretty solid. The beam is all really solid. After I've cleaned it up, the beam troughs, there's no rot. Everything's been protected really well with fiberglass over the years. Uh, this boat was in an anchorage for 10 years where a lot of stuff was left open but yeah these last two beams that i've just been taking up uh, and cleaning are actually in really good condition there's just one spot on this most aft beam which was rotten in a similar place to, the, to one of the first beams but it's really not as bad at all and i think that it's uh, definitely usable perhaps in the future i will build new beams when i have a nice dry workshop someplace we'll see but the, I, I think they'll be good for now and steady. So it's pretty straight. So I just need to repeat that on the nine other pieces of steel and that's just for the top hole. And then uh, obviously at the bottom there'll be a hole uh, because they clamp to the beams. Then at the bottom there's gonna be another hole which is gonna support the cockpit. So my mate Bass has just bought this huge lifeboat which I think he's going to convert into a commercial boat. I'm going to see if I can have a little look inside. I've never seen inside one of these things before. Ooh. What's the plan Bass? Eight weeks of hell. <laughs> no, I like it. Yeah. Completely, like all the benches already out, and mm. this is the material that's already always in those benches. So food, water, wow. air tanks. So that's like emergency water supply. Yeah. Just little bottles. Also ballast as well, kind of, <laughs> but not really. And then food. So we're going to completely strip it, probably this week already. And then we're yeah. going to build a frame for a new floor, some toilets, a bar. Yeah, <laughs> amazing. And then, so is that, f what's that, oxygen? Yes, it's oxygen. 
tricks. So there is a fire extinguishing system on top of the boat. Yeah. That's connected to the engine with a pump. So if you put that on, if in case of fire you need to go away, then of course you cannot open any hatches. So this is oxygen. Okay. Yeah. And like how many people is this like? 150. 150. Whoa. And what will you do with like all these rations? I'm gonna, I'm gonna give them a few. It's gonna be a long, hard <laughs> winter. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll take. Uh, I'll throw them away. I have no clue what it is. It's got Chinese on the label. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's noodles, then probably it's still good. <laughs> but I don't think it is, actually. Well, I, you, so you don't mind if I take one just to see what? Yeah, of Amazing. Wow, like all this water. Jeez. Hundred and fifty people. Yeah. And like the engine? What what, what do you think you'll do? It, it's a book forty eight. Yeah. But this one was new, it was never used, so they bought it for a project like a big company and they never used them, they were never commissioned to uh, anything. So they left them to write off the depreciation. Yeah. And then they were sold this one was sold to me. So it's just completely new. So this is the first dust. New. Nothing ever touched. Yeah. It's crazy how they can pull like with a little turbo, yeah. they can pull fifty horsepower out of a three cylinder engine. Yeah, it's indestructible. So, so you think only eight weeks to get get her? Yeah, uh, eight yeah. or nine weeks. Oh, you put me to shame. <laughs> oh, but then I'll do it every day. Yeah, and I've done it a couple of times before. Yeah, it's not your first rodeo. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing. Well, good luck. Yeah, like with the rain on the window. It's impossible. Nice, That's it. Nice this cheap steering wheel. Yeah. <laughs> so this is how I've spent the last two and a half days sitting there. I'll definitely be uh, giving you guys an update on uh, Bass's progress. He's done a few of these lifeboat conversions now, so he knows what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see what he does. But yeah, a lot of people ask me, do I like the Netherlands? How are you enjoying the Netherlands? And like, yeah, I absolutely love it. Like, I know I'm obviously in a boat yard now so obviously there's loads of boaty stuff happening but they're basically a nation kind of linked to boaty if people don't own a boat they have someone in the family that does <laughs> or they've experienced them it goes to show with the amount of like chandleries marine stores also in the Netherlands it's really good for raw materials like stainless steel wood it's all available but it's not cheap that's the problem it's not cheap but apart from that it's like the perfect country to be a boat fanatic. Anyway, more drilling. So it says directions for use. Take one containing eight block, table of food each person every six hours. Break it into small pieces and chew well. Don't drink water during the first 24 hours unless injured or ill. After that time, no more than half a liter every 24 hours. Each person should drink not more than one tenth of a liter, I think, water during 24 hours when the when the water in using up. A little bit of Chinglish. Ooh. It's, it's packaged separately. So this is one block of the eight blocks which you should eat every six hours. Wow, this is not bad stuff, you know. So, 
I just tasted a bit when I took the plastic off and it tastes like very biscuity. The taste is like a stale digestive biscuit and the texture is more like a corn flowery. I don't know if you've ever had like the Vietnamese, uh, it tastes like a Vietnamese snack that I had once. It's not bad actually. It's good shit. So I've bought this little angle grinder stand to cut my threaded bar. 20 euros from Lidl. Hopefully it's gonna speed things up. A lot of people have mentioned, and I know a lot of people will say I should put a little nut on the screwed rod and then turn it off to make the threads on the end. But it doesn't really work with long pieces because I have to cut four sections out of this and I would have to put a nut on the end of each end. So I would have to put something like seven nuts on and screwing it and unscrewing it is not going to be much fun, so I'll just use the tap. So it does burn it quite a lot. It probably, I don't know if it is better to hacksaw it because that'll get corrosion now I think from the heating up of it. I don't know. So I just got off a live session. So thanks to everyone who watched that. Apologies for the wind noise, it was pretty unbearable. Um, but basically what I did on that live, if you didn't see it, I just put the back parts of these engine sled mounts. And I also went to pick up a package. <laughs> I have a ton of new stuff from EcoFlow. It's gonna be a lot of unboxing and wrapping and, and packaging material so I'm gonna get it all set up first I'm gonna try it out so I know what I'm talking about and then I'll let you know about this stuff so this is a EcoFlow Delta power bank this is an add-on battery for the heater and air conditioning And this is a portable AC with heater. So I've had a good four or five days to really get to know this equipment and it's really good. I can confirm it's really good. I've also finished the back part of the engine mount brackets, done all the drilling, the sawing, the cutting for that. So I'll spare you the footage for that. I was looking at a Wave 2. I was going to buy a Wave 2 because it's basically a two in one. So while I'm struggling with this winter weather now, in the future, hopefully next year, I'm going to be closer to the equator. It's going to get very warm, especially over summer. So then I have the AC and it's perfect for this cabin because it's not that big and it's insulated. So, so my experience with this so far with heating, it's made everything toasty. But the best thing is it dehumidifies it. Before all my clothes and everything, if they were close to the walls of the cabin, they would get moist and then start to smell. But that musty smell of inside this cabin is now gone thanks to this machine so thank you very much i think it is more of an ac than a heater because it's not like super blazing hot but because it's drying out the air it is toasty enough i just love the fact that my wellington boots are dry now my coat i can dry i can dry clothes and it's just brilliant for that anyway what this is in technical terms it's a 5100 btu AC and a 6100 BTU heater. EcoFlow was also so kind to give me this add-on battery which has been super helpful. I had a couple of power outages so it's just kept running 
uh, with the added battery but you can use this without a battery you can also charge the battery with solar and with the uh, cigarette lighter output it has a max mode an eco mode and a quiet night mode i've just been blasting this at max and then later on in the evening just taking it down to eco just to conserve the energy a little bit it has some nice fancy controls on here but this is the first time i've had an electrical device or like a battery bank it's the same with this one where the app has been really useful so i can control i can turn it on and off i can control the temperature the power from my phone while i'm snuggled up in bed and the design of it it looks so cool i mean look at that it's like from a lamborghini or something in terms of product design and product quality these are definitely up there at the top uh bass who you saw doing the lifeboat he has an eco flow delta 2 but the larger version and also the fridge and the ice maker so you know there are people thoroughly enjoying these products out there and uh yeah it's brilliant so this is how i've got it set up and my boat's perfect for it because i have this window here i actually like to keep this duct inside the hull because essentially you have two circuits all right so if that's sucking in the air from the hull and then blowing it out and then here it's sucking the air from the hull and blowing it out hot then it's you get the full dehumidification and I have my little there's a drain and a, a little pump in here and it automatically drains and I just drain it out into this bottle in my shoe <laughs> but I could easily enough just put that out there <laughs> but it's really nice to see the amount of water and moisture that this thing sucks out of the air and you can just really tell inside everything feels dry and nice but yeah I'll just keep it like this I think just because it's neater it takes up a lot of space in in my boat but in terms of like an air conditioner and a heater this is still incredibly compact because of the luxury that i have there is a downside and that is that i have to find a place for this machine but when the weather's you know at, at its optimum i can just store it away the external battery is not connected and this is basically how much it would use if it was just plugged in by the ac and that is only 410 and that's at max power if this was on eco mode it would be less so you can also plug this directly to dc here so i'll see how much uh, it consumes so yeah with the direct dc cable 355 now i've got one of these cheap fan heaters and i'm going to put it on the lowest setting and see how much it takes eight hundred so these things are really really power hungry put it up to the maximum and you can hear the inverter kicking in here but yeah 1700 so the inverter is really <laughs> going for it in here and also this is just pushing the air around the boat. This actually conditions the air. You've seen a little bit of this so far. You've seen me promote other battery banks and you know, they're good, but they, they, these EcoFlows are on a bit of a different level, like in terms of the design, but also the little features. I've been trying this stuff out for like four or five days. This basically 1000 watt hour battery has lasted so much longer than i thought it would i've been charging my phone my computer headphones camera batteries and doing these little tests and stuff literally over five days and i've got 30 percent left which is i think is really good i don't know if it's as important for everyone else but the usb-c outlets so as i can charge my phone and my computer with those direct from dc is super helpful and obviously you can charge this with solar with the cigarette lighter uh, output or just with ac but also let's check out the solar panel which ecoflow were also kind enough to send me So I'm actually well happy with this because it's uh, it's waterproof. A lot of these foldable solar panels are not waterproof, it's IP68. It can be submerged under 1.5 meters of fresh water for less than 30 minutes. <laughs> but we don't want to submerge our solar panels, so that means that it's going to be waterproof on deck or once mounted. 
the case also doubles up as a stand and also it's bifacial I'm not quite sure what that means but uh, it must be good I'm well happy with this I'm gonna store it away ah oh, bifacial I'm gonna store it away for now and it will be mounted eventually It's been non-stop rain and today is so nice and sunny <laughs> it looks like it's like the last sunny day for a little while as well unfortunately <laughs> a lot of people have mentioned about building uh, something to keep the rain off you know while I'm working on the boat but I think that to build something strong enough to deal with the wind is pretty much gonna be or well, it's gonna take me a long time it's gonna be pretty much a permanent installation so I just thought I won't I can't really be jumping ahead that far really. So let's just hope nature's kind to me. Done a lot of adjustments, getting everything straight uh, because they're kind of clamped on. It's kind of difficult to get everything in line, and this is going to be really important to get everything in line now because hey, hey. I'm going to put this cross piece. not going to be easy. So I have a cross piece for here, one for here, and also here. Yeah, basically these need to be in line with this which they will be. So, it does actually feel pretty solid, especially when the, the, the mounts are pulled up. I've just put this bar up with a rope. I just need to through bolt it. And uh, yeah. But it feels all right, you know. Even though it's the same as before. <laughs> What's the coldest month of the year? December. <laughs> um, just double check. That's right, isn't it? You can use a spirit level on a boat, can you? Yeah, I'm just gonna mark out where I'm gonna drill the holes into this piece and then drilling them through here is gonna be more tricky. Whether I'm not sure whether to do it in the dinghy. The uh, drill sharpenings could very easily pop my dinghy. But, uh, we'll see, we'll see. I'll drill the holes in this first and then go through here. definitely ready for a break looking forward to it my parents are gonna come in a few days actually we're gonna take all sorts of measurements on the inside of the cabin tops because we want to make up some proper chain plates which go to the bulkheads because yeah I wasn't really happy with the chain plate place 
and yeah a break from this weather can do some work inside so yeah I'm really sorry it's, uh, it's such slow slow progress nothing I know I keep I keep moaning about it every week so I'm really I'm really sorry about that <laughs> but yeah really ready for a break and uh, yeah super happy with like everything that has been accomplished this year but woo, looking forward to some home comforts so I'll just plod on plod on <laughs> while I can it didn't even say it was going to rain today I thought I had a whole day of outside work Oh, I give up. <laughs> 